wow, that video was awesome. Sure, I'll join a Slack. I love putting my email address into boxes and clicking buttons. And click. Where am I? Who are you people? Hello, welcome. You are at the Trace Lab Slack, so you must have joined this through a link, and we welcome you here. Uh, my name is Alex. I also go by the handle of Baloo, as you see up above. Um, we'll, we'll be here to guide you and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, what we do is we crowdsource open source intelligence to help find missing persons. So if you have any further questions, uh, either I or uh, my associate Heather will be able to assist. Hi, uh, my name is Heather. I also go by part in the Slack channel and I am a community engagement volunteer. So basically I help out in the Slack channel and also you'll learn about some events that we run called CTFs or Capturing Flag events. And I also uh, help out during that answering any questions that anyone might have. Okay, yeah. So I just saw this really cool video on YouTube. I followed the link. So here I am, like, I think I know what's going on here and how can I help? How much do you know about Trace Labs right now? Uh, not much. I, like I said, I just saw that one video. Um, it just seemed like something really cool that you guys were doing here. And, you know, I'd love to get more involved. Okay, great. I'm going to show you a couple of things that we have um, on our, through our Slack channel and on our website. So let me know if you see the welcome message from the greet bot that you should have seen in Slack. Uh, yeah, I didn't really read that. Okay. Well, it's a, it, it has a lot of handy resources in there, um, including some of the, the handles for individuals that you can reach out to on our team. So it gives you a great list of individuals that you can ask questions of, uh, including uh, Hart. And I'll type that out here. Just you can at H-E-A-R-T. Uh, and that will get you in touch with Heather as well. Um, so for some of the information that we have here, we have majority of resources uh, that are used for helping to locate missing persons. So what we can do is we can take it to our website uh, of tracelabs.org. You'll be able to find the resources under the initiatives and search party. So if you're looking for some guides as to what we do, um, they're located here under initiatives, search party. And if you're looking for some, some resources, uh, we have them listed here. Okay, so I think I get it. I think I understand. So it seems like the website's probably a good place to start, but like, how do you actually find missing people? Like, how does that work? Okay, Heather, you wanna chime in on how we find missing person? So generally each month we have about three to four cases. They are published in the ongoing ops channel. So if Alex, if you could click on the ongoing ops channel. Yeah, so there are a list of channels over on the side. Um, you have the questions and resources there. Ongoing ops would be one of them that you can select as well. And that will give a lot of information on uh, the cases that we have going on now we do okay. have we do have one that we can demonstrate so if this is the landing page for ongoing ops in general uh, but for the individual missing persons we generally have them started with a, a channel name that starts with mp dash and then the person so in this case we have mp demo usa okay so the missing people that you guys are working on like that's called ongoing ops. Yep. And then each missing person case gets its own channel with MP in front of it. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And yeah. when you join one of these channels, the useful thing to do is to look at the pin messages really in any channel that you have. Uh, so for getting around in the Slack channels, one of the good things to do is to check the pin messages. And in order to do that, you'll just go up to the corner show the channel details, there'll be some pinned messages here and we'll drop them down. Um, you can scroll through and this provides some information as to how you can get involved. Um, and additionally for the cases that are sanctioned, um, we have an op request form that you can fill out in order to 
request an operation. So this is very handy because one of the common questions that we get uh, is individuals that have seen information about a missing person uh, or some high profile news about a missing person and they'd be interested in looking for that individual. Uh, if it is not one of our current cases, it can be requested through that link. Um, you can request the operation and we have the op request form here filling out your name, missing person's name, and we do need a law enforcement case URL. So it doesn't need to be something where law enforcement has asked for the, the public's help and provide all this information in here and any sort of details. You'll submit that and it will go into our list of cases to select from. Okay. So if I like know of a missing person case that I think, you know, you all could work on, like that's how I would submit it. Like that's how I would br bring it to your attention. That's correct. That, and we get, unfortunately, a lot of them submitted that way. Um, there are a lot of people and we do uh, go through and select ones that would be a best use of our efforts there. Uh, something that we can really get some good traction on and really engage the community on. Okay. And you said that the only cases that you work on are ones where like the police or whoever has asked for help on. Was that right? That's correct. Uh, Heather, you have any input on that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I wanted to go back to, um, you know, how we look for missing people. So uh, let's say, Tom, if you joined uh, the Slack channel and you decided that you wanted to help us look for missing people, I would tell you to go to the ongoing ops channel and look at some of the cases. So for this instance, we're going to use the demo channel. So that would have the MB again stands for missing persons. Their last name would be in demo and then USA is, uh, that's the country that they're from. So the most important thing to do when you join this channel is you must read, it's generally the first message that is posted. It, it has a lot of important instructions. It also tells you how to join our Trello, which is how we organize the information. So you need an existing Trello account and we have our team link that Alex is highlighting there. So you would go to that link and join and you would see our layout. Uh, each, each case gets their own Trello section. Okay, cool. I actually use Trello every day. So I think I'm pretty good there. Like over there on the left-hand side of your screen, like those are the different channels. Yep. Are those, the, you are those the only channels? Uh, these are not the only channels. We'll show you adding more channels okay. here. But here you see that uh, you, you know, our, our demo individual asked a question there. And one of us got back, you know, fairly quickly saying, hey, it would be a good idea to post that on our Trello board and we'll take a look. Uh, for adding additional channels, you would click this browse channels button there and there will be a list of additional channels that we have. Okay, cool. So if there's any that you haven't joined, um, we would have ones that you can join or you can preview in order to join them as well. Okay, so I think I'm getting it. You know, the ongoing ops are the missing persons cases that you're working on. Is that like all that you do then? No, we also do uh, some, some CTFs and those are competitive events uh, wherein um, it's very time bound, very, um, you, you form a team in order to find intelligence, find information. And we do have those under our initiatives as well on our site. So we can go, um, the, another name for our CTFs is search party. So you can select the search party here and it says, what are they? you know, the four members per team, like a traditional search and rescue team here. And you find different flags, uh, pieces of intelligence that you submit um, during the competition. Uh, and those are reviewed and vetted by our talented judging team and, you know, scored accordingly uh, based on the value of the intelligence and the uh, clarity and relevance of the intelligence here. Uh, so here we have one for the next search party 
is in 75 days from when we record this, uh, but certainly feel free to uh, jump into our Slack channel and ask there. Okay, so the search party thing, is that pretty much the same as the ongoing op stuff, but like timed? So it's both timed and it's competitive versus collaborative. So in the ongoing ops, we all um, work together and share information. Um, for the search parties, it has a competitive feel. So you're going to share information amongst your team of four uh, and sort of compete against the other teams out there for prizes. And okay. also another thing uh, to note is you don't have to be in a team of four members. You can have up to four or you can also try to compete by yourself. But generally everyone is pretty friendly and we create specific channels for certain events. So That's the thing that you use to like hack into people's accounts so you can help find them. Is that how that works? Well, we don't hack into people's accounts. So we don't do anything illegal. I'm going to take this moment to just lean into the mic and say, don't do crimes for the people in the back. So we do not hack into accounts. Uh, we do not uh, do anything that would be active. Uh, we stay purely passive. And uh, you know, additionally, if you have any questions on that, feel free to reach out. Uh, so we don't break into the accounts or hack in. Uh, we use our OSINT for good. And another thing that I just like to chime in and probably uh, one common thing that happens is that people will try to do password resets to try and get uh, perhaps uh, you know an email that's associated with a particular Facebook account. That is something that we definitely do not do. That is considered active because you are actually interacting with the account. And it's something that, again, as Alex mentioned, we want to respect people's privacy. So it's possible that depending on the site that you're on or the, um, the application that it's possible that the missing person will get a notification that someone is trying to log into their account. And it could be quite upsetting to them. It could be upsetting to the family. So something that we stress, um, you know, greatly is that we, we respect, you know, every individual out there. And, and that's why it's so important that we are passive and we do not do things like that. Okay. I think, I think I've got it now. So we are actually like hacking into people's accounts and stuff. We're just like gathering pieces of information passively. Yes. yes. So if you have ever searched for, um, let's say, a famous football player and you've done a Google search and you find his Twitter account or you find, uh, you know, his, his stats page, that's the type of searching that we do. It's everything that's publicly available information. Additionally, if you need to reach out to either of us um, within Slack, you can either DM us down below um, and I can say for direct messages, you can open a direct message, type the name of the person. I am blue and then we also have heart. So I can select blue and I can select heart as well. And another good individual of which you bear striking resemblance to would be human decoded. And he is an excellent resource as well. Cool. Okay, well, I think my last question is, how do I get out of here? <laughs>